All right, thanks so much for the intro, Barb. Um, I'm excited to be here. So we'll just start by introducing ourselves a little bit more. I'm Eric Rosenbaum, as, as Barb said, a um, product manager on the Scratch team. Before that, for uh, five years or so, I was an engineer on Scratch and uh, among many things, helped to create the extensions to Scratch that add blocks, including for the micro bit. Before that, I did my um, PhD with the Lifelong Kindergarten Group where Scratch was born at MIT. So I've been involved with Scratch for many years uh, and I'll pass to Tracy. Thanks a lot, Eric. And so excited to see everybody here. So I'm Tracy. Um, so my work focused on uh, international outreach of Scratch. So basically connecting with educators, organizations around the world to support them uh, in using uh, Scratch in a creative way. And at the same time, we also learn from them, like how they are using Scratch and then gathering all the wonderful examples. Another piece of my work uh, focuses on localization of Scratch. So currently Scratch is on 74 languages, um, but for us, uh, localization is beyond just translating the Scratch interface and so forth. So we also want to make our resources, materials uh, culturally responsive. So this is something that we hope to learn from uh, educators, organizations around the world as well. Um, so yeah, so great to have such a uh, international group today. So in our session today, the playful introduction to Scratch and Microbit, um, we will talk, uh, introduce Scratch a little bit in case uh, you have not have experience with this yet. And then we'll also walk you through about how to connect Microbit to Scratch. So connecting the physical and the digi uh, digital and then at the end, we'll also show some starter projects, which is like very fun, diverse on different topics that you can just get started right away. OK, I'm going to share awesome. my screen and show um, the Scratch homepage, if people have not seen that before. Um, just give me a second here. Hopefully, whoa, there we go. OK, so there is what you see when you visit scratch.mit.edu. And I'll let Tracy say a little more. Yeah, so Scratch is actually a free coding uh, platform and community uh, for kids around the world. So for us, the community uh, community piece is really important because kids can connect um, and share with one another. So if you just scroll down, go to our landing page, you can already see a wide range of different projects uh, created by kids. So like you can see a space project uh, at the top row, some cats. So kids would create games, animations, and stories uh, using Scratch. And then in most cases, they also draw their own artwork. Um, some even like create songs uh, or record their own voice singing uh, into these projects. So you can see like a wide range of different things uh, on there, many different styles, and then also created by kids from around the world. So you could even see uh, projects in many different uh, languages. So that is the Scratch community. Um, yeah, I'm just making sure I'm unmuted here. OK, um, so uh, we also uh, wanted to share with you a special page on Scratch for the micro bits. So if you go to scratch.mit.edu slash micro bit, that has all your information about um, how to get started using the micro bit with Scratch. Um, and so. Um, here, I'm on a Mac, so it shows the information about Mac, but it also works on Windows, Chrome OS, and Android, and they're a little different from each other, um, so be sure to have a look at um, how that works. There's a getting started step of installing um, a special file, hex file, on your micro bit that you need to do first. It's very easy, just drag and drop, uh, and that lets you connect um, to Scratch from your micro bit, and then you can just jump into the Scratch editor. Uh, I'll just show the rest of this page. There's some things to try, some starter projects that we'll walk through later, uh, these activity cards that will show if there's time, and some troubleshooting information. So this is all a good one-stop landing page for micro bit and Scratch. Um, well, let's let's just jump in and give it a try. So um, I've already done these setup steps of installing Scratch Link because I'm on a Mac. That's what's needed for Mac or Windows. On Chrome OS and Android, we have a separate app that you install, so you don't need Scratch Link. And then I've already installed my hex file. So let's just go and open up, um, whoops, open up Scratch. So I can click Create. And we'll go into the Scratch 
editor. So first thing we'll see, there's a little tutorial video here. Um, I highly recommend that, but we're going to skip that for now. And what else have we got? I'll zoom in a little. So Scratch, if you haven't seen it before, is a coding environment. It's free um, for making your own games, animations, and stories, like Tracy just said. And it's got these graphical blocks um, to make things happen on the stage here. So if I click this Move block, I can just click to see what it does. OK, it moves the cat. I can click Turn one way, Turn the other way. What about go to random position? Oh, OK. Uh, or Glide to a random position. <clears throat> so you can learn what these blocks do just by poking at them. You know. Uh, oh, did we get the sound? Is the sound coming through, Tracy? Yes. It is. OK, you good. You can hear the meow. You yep. can hear the meow. Always want to make sure we can hear the meow. And then if I don't want a cat, I can go to the sprite library here and choose something else. So let's get a dragon, say. OK, cool. So I'm going to delete, delete my cat. Whoops. OK, so now I've got a dragon. Let's program it. Um, I can click this turn block to make my dragon turn different ways. But what if we wanted to make an interactive dragon working up towards connecting the micro bit? Well, just with Scratch, we can make it interactive by pressing keys. So I'm going to press my space key on my keyboard. Every time I press it, it turns one way. Maybe I'll make that the right arrow instead. Grab another one. Have that be the left arrow. So now I can move my dragon around with the arrow keys a little bit. Um, so that's just a tiny bit of a taste of Scratch. That works. Let's go right to the micro bit. So um, I have to make sure that I've got the Scratch Link software in, um, installed and running. If you can see the top of my screen there, I'm not sure you can, but I've got the Scratch Link application going in the background. Um, now I'm going to add the micro bit extension. So at the bottom left of the Scratch editor here is this button, this blue button to add extensions. So extensions, you've seen some blocks. These are additional blocks for Scratch for doing a bunch of different things, including, if I scroll down, connecting to the micro bit. So I'll just select that. Now that will open up this little window that is scanning for micro bits. And we'll just make sure mine is ready to go here. And now if I click Connect, it sees my micro bit as Zizog. Your micro bit will have its own name scrolling across the screen once you've installed our special hex file. Um, so I can see it says Zizog on mine. That's how you tell the difference. If, if there's multiple, there'll be a list. So I click Connect. Now I am connected. Um, so now you can't see my micro bit yet, but if I click Display Text just to test it out, I can click that block in Scratch, and now my micro bit in my hand here is saying hello. Um, so that's very easy to do. Um, but I want to make sure that you can see it too. So I'm going to do kind of a trick here. I'm going to add another extension called Video Sensing. Now, this is an awesome extension in your own right that you can use to do lots of things. But today, what we're using it for is uh, just to show the video. So you can see my micro bit when I hold it up. So now, when I click that display blo text block, um, you can see the hello scrolling across the screen. That's pretty cool. So let's start making um, an interactive project. So I've still got my dragon here. Um, actually, maybe before we do that, <laughs> I'll just pause and say, I'll ask Tracy if any questions are coming in or anything I should pause and address right now. Um, not at the moment. I think Shelly might have some more questions about like Scratch Link and the app, but maybe we can save that uh, for later. But I think so far the blocks and using microbit connecting um, all are fine. We don't have any questions on that yet. Awesome. Okay, so let's just go back to the microbit blocks here. You can see that check mark shows that we're connected. Um, so let's do when the A button is pressed. So now instead of the arrow keys to control the dragon, we're going to control it with the micro bit button. Cool. So you can, and then, oh, I want to go the other way. Got to hook that up. When B button pressed, turn the other way. And so now I have something kind of like a wireless controller for my interactive dragon story world. Um, if I click on the costumes tab, this dragon sprite comes with three different poses. That's ooh, with some fire. So now if I go back to my code, I can use 
looks block that's called next costume. So let's check what that does. I just click on it and the dragon is animating, stepping through its costumes each time I click. So if I just add that to each of my stacks, now when I press the button, it's animating with some fire. Cool. Um, or I could do, say, um, change X by 10. What's that going to do? Well, oh, that's, I'm pressing the B button. Oh, no, that's A. <laughs> OK, so now we're kind of turning and moving across the screen at the same time. Um, anyway, you could imagine how I could, I could get uh, more and more effects that way. Let's try adding a sound. Now, does the dragon sprite come with a sound? It comes with a magic spell sound. Let's we clicked on the sound tab here. Um, and I've got the magic spell. I can actually make that if I wanted to make it lower. I can use the slower button. That's pretty cool. Or I could add a new sound from our whole library of sounds. Let's see. What might I want my dragon? I want to kind of like dragon like growl. Is there? No, oh, is that a dragon sound? Or is it? Oh, <laughs> we're going to make a barking, a croaking dragon. Yeah. This, dra this dragon's trying to roar. It's got a sore throat a little bit. We're going to the croak. OK, so now I can just click st start sound croak. So now when I press the A button, oops, that's the B button. I keep getting them backwards. OK, there we go. So you can get animation and sound and interactivity with your micro bit. I'm going to make it stop turning here. Just a little trick to set the direction. There's this direction wheel here. I'll get my dragon going left and right again. Take those turns out. Cool. Eric, I think the sound is a bit low, maybe um, like a growl sound. Oh, Let's is it like too quiet? Turn that up a little. Yeah. We'll just maybe we'll switch back to the magic spell. Is that coming through better? Yes. Yep, it's better. But I think we are hearing like the sound from your physical laptop, if, if like from your mic. If oh, that makes sense. Yes, yeah. it does. I think yeah. So that's yeah, a little bit weak. That's why. I understand. So maybe yep. there's a way I can. Here, I'm gonna stop sharing and restart quickly. Sorry about that. Um. Ah, uh, yeah, I had it set up incorrectly. Sorry about that. OK, doing it again. All right, now, and now, magic spell. Hopefully that comes through yes. stronger. OK, that's yep. better. Sorry about that, folks. Thanks for your patience. Um, we're just going to show one other micro bit feature here. There's a lot of micro bit blocks available, but one um, really magical one um, that's not just the buttons, or the LEDs is this when moved block. So let's maybe we'll we'll grab our stack for the that does the magic spell sound and Linux costume and change X. And now instead of pressing the button, I can just whoa. Every time we're out of control. Okay, I gotta hold still. Every time I move, the dragon moves too. And then there's other options here in the menu when shaken. So now it's less sensitive, but if I if I you know um, move the micro bit quickly, it's going to happen each time. And so I happen to have this cardboard tube here. I can just if I had some tape handy, oh, which I do over there. But anyway, you can imagine taping it to the cardboard tube, and now oh, it's like a magic wand. You can wave your wand at the computer and make the dragon do the magic. Um, so you can imagine doing a more elaborate physical construction, but I prototyped it in just a few seconds with my fingers there. Um, and then there's also this jumped option, more advanced option. Basically, that actually is detecting free fall. So the micro bit can detect movement, and it can in particular detect when it is falling through the air. I don't know if you want to encourage uh, tossing of micro bits, but it is actually pretty fun. One thing we've done in the past is embedded them in like a little foam ball, and then you can throw it in the air and make something happen. Um, so that's actually really fun. Um, OK, I'm going to pause there again before we jump to the starter projects um, for any other questions or thoughts.
Yep, I think there's、uh, one question from Carlo about whether iPad、uh, will be able to use the micro bit extension. Unfortunately, we do not have a way to connect Scratch to a micro bit on iOS devices on iPads. No, sorry about that. We do support Macs, Windows computers, Chromebooks, and Android tablets, but not iPads. Sorry about that. Yep, I think that's that's the only question so far. Cool.、Yeah. All right. So now we're going to leave our dragon and go back to.、Uh, actually, before we leave, I'm just going to show. If you want to, you can disconnect the micro bit by clicking that check mark and click disconnect. And now it's scrolling its name again, like I was saying before. Zizog. That's I can tell which one it is, and if I click that exclamation point again,、um, you could say I can reconnect. But there's also this help button here, so that's a handy shortcut to the microbit landing page.、Uh, did the screen sharing switch to that one? It looks like it, it did. Uh, no, wait. Huh. I don't know if I can switch tabs here. Just a second. All right. So hopefully you're seeing the microbit landing page now. Yep.、Yeah. Okay. Cool. So let's、um, scroll down to those starter projects. So first one is the heartbeat.、Um, oh, are you seeing the heartbeat project or no? No. No. Okay. I'm gonna、yeah. have to. Sorry about that. I'll just put the URL in there. Okay, got it now. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so now you should be seeing this heartbeat project, but my microbit is not yet connected. So I've got to go down to the microbit category, and you can see the exclamation point. We're not connected. I just click on that. That brings up the、um, connection. And I click connect, and now I'm connected again. So let's just add that video sensing extension again, and I have a heart face. Hi. Okay.、Um, just so you can see the micro bit and what I'm doing, because now this is going to show using our display block. So when I press the A button,、um, it plays a sound, and each button does that. So it plays a sound. It animates the heart on the screen. And it's also displaying the heart on the micro bit LEDs. So this is another really nice feature. I'm just going to move the heart out of the way. Do, 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 just drag that over. Another nice feature of of the scratch blocks for micro bit is this display block. So if I wanted to fill in the heart, I can just click on it there and then modify it by clicking. And now I click on the block, and it just updates right away. And so what if I wanted to make an animation? All right, let's quickly. So I can right click to duplicate. Make another copy of that. If I just modify it, maybe I'll make the heart.、Hmm, what should my animation be? Hmm. 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 I'll make、um, a little starburst. Okay, so we're going to start with one dot, and then make it kind of plus. I'll test that one out. Okay, so I've got a dot and a plus. Now, if I make a stack of these, it'll do. First one, then the other. It's kind of quick, so I'll right-click and duplicate that block, and add some more to it. Snap them together, test it out. Oh, you can already see it's animating. Now maybe I'll just take away the center as we go, just quickly putting together animation. Whoa, cool. Okay, and then I'll just make this last one, have them disappear. Let's try it. Cool, a little, a little animated starburst. Now, last thing here. If I go to Control, there's this forever block.、It、has a kind of mouth. Everything inside the forever block will just loop around and around. So, if I click on that stack now, my animation is looping over and over again. Now, here's a really cool thing. That might be running, but these stacks can also work too. So, I can still press my buttons. So, the animation is playing as before, but I'm still controlling the heart. Getting the sounds. 
you can do a lot of things at once. Um, all right, so that's our uh, microbit heart project. Let's go back. Do, do, do. And bring up the tilt guitar. I'm just going to have to juggle my tabs here. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing our guitar project. I'll add the video again. Okay, so now uh, this uses the when any button pressed. Oops, I'm not connected yet. Got to reconnect. So click on the exclamation point there, click connect, and we're good. Now I can press any button to play the note C. So this is just a C guitar sound. It comes with the guitar sprite, but you could of course record or make your own sounds. But what does this stack do? So usually in Scratch, you start everything off with the green flag. So if I click that green flag, now, well, there's actually a lot happening at once here. So first of all, if I press the button, there's like sounds going all over the place. Why is that? That's because this set pitch effect to tilt angle block is inside of forever. So over and over, it's checking the tilt angle of the micro bit. So you can see as I, as I tilt it back and forth, it's also controlling the direction of the guitar sprite. So point in direction of tilt angle is making it so that as I, as I tilt the micro bit around, it's tilting the guitar and that's also controlling the note. So it's kind of a crazy whoa, whoa kind of guitar sound. And then the backdrop, if I click over here on the bottom right, has its own code that sets the color effect to the tilt angle as I tilt around. And so that's just using this backdrop image that's a set of colors that do something nice when you use the color effect block to change the colors using micro bit just by moving it around. And then if I wanted to, I could make my own virtual guitar or physical guitar to play the virtual guitar with. Here I happen to have a ukulele, so I could tape, I could tape the, whoa, it's going crazy. I could tape my micro bit right to a real ukulele. Oh, it's backwards. Why is that? I have to just rotate the micro bit around so that the tilt angle matches. And now as I tilt my ukulele, the one on the screen kind of does the same thing as the physical one. You could also just make your own guitar out of cardboard to have a physical guitar to control the digital one. Um, so I love making these kinds of physical digital musical instruments. Um, so that's the guitar. Um, all right, we're going to show one more project. So if we go back to that landing page, the Ocean Adventure. I'll just bring that up quickly over here. OK, so as usual, we just got to reconnect. So I click micro bit down here, click on the exclamation point, And it found my micro bit right away. Click Connect, and it's connected. So what's going on with this one? We got a fish, we got a saxophone. And before I press the green flag, I can see like when any button is pressed next costume, what does that do? Well, oops, I'm gonna add my video. So when I press a button, I become a different fish. Um, or if I so choose, a spaceship. But let's stay a fish for now. Um, so now if we press the green flag to start the project, what's going on is that as I tilt Whoa. As I tilt the micro bit uh, front and back, I'm controlling the height of the fish. So that stack just says forever, set Y, the Y position being up and down, to the tilt angle of the micro bit. So it's a kind of a tilt controller. And so now I can try to get the saxophones to miss me. Oh, get below it there. Oh yeah. Or I can try to hit the saxophones and they play different notes. All right, so I'll stop the project for a second and we'll click over to the saxophone sprite. And now you can see the meat of it here is the start sound block. So it says if touching the fish, then start sound. And instead of a particular sound, it's using pick random. So if you go to the, so pick random, if I click on that, spits out a random number from one, one, to, from one to eight. And it's plugged into the start sound block because you can use a number to choose a sound. If I click on the sounds tab, there are eight different sounds here. Um, and 
by putting the pick random block in there, I can choose a random sound. So each time I click on this, it plays a different random saxophone sound. It could be any random sound. Um, so that's a little bit about how that works. The larger program here says, first of all, go to edge. So if I click on that, what does that do? Well, it just moves the saxophone to a random position over on the right-hand edge. And that's, do, here's the code for that. When I receive go to edge, it sets the Y, the up and down position to a random number. And then the X to 220. So that's the X position is this way and 220 is over at the right-hand side. So it does that at the start when you press the green flag. And then this forever loop, every step it says change the X by minus five. So that, whoop. Oh, that makes it go to the left, and then it checks if it's touching the fish and plays a sound, and if it is, it goes back to the edge. And it also checks if the X position is over on the left, so if it makes it all the way over there, whoops, um, then it goes back to the right-hand side again. And then you've got a saxophone that just keeps going and is always checking if it's touching the fish. So that's how we made our microbit fish project. Um, uh, Oh, and of course, that's why I brought today this fit. I borrowed this fish um, from my cats. It's actually a cat toy. But <laughs> this is, again, just to show, if you want to make a, a physical fish to control your virtual one, you could just tape your micro bit to a fish. We also have sometimes enjoyed using a giant inflatable fish for this purpose. And we love this kind of provocation uh, for, for our workshop participants of what physical objects can you transform into a game controller or musical instrument just by attaching the micro bit to it and making something magical happen on the screen when it moves or when you press the buttons or when you shake it or toss it. Uh, and that really takes a leap away from just looking at this as a little circuit board to looking at it as a way to transform everyday objects and materials around you into something that has this magical power to connect to the digital world where you have all the flexibility of animation and sound, interactivity and music in Scratch to, to connect the things together. Um, OK, so I'll pause there um, and maybe go back to the microbit landing page. We'll see if we have any questions or suggestions from folks. Yeah, we have um, some participants saying that they have been having issues connecting microbit version two with Scratch, even though version one worked fine. So they just wonder if like anything changed in the version two microbit that might cause some issues. Yeah. So that's a, that's a great question. Um, we did update our system to make it work with microbit version two. The demo that I've been doing is with a microbit V2. That's what you've been seeing all along. It does work. Um, and so uh, there's a number of things to potentially troubleshoot, though. Um, one is make sure you've got Scratch Link downloaded, installed, and running if you're on Windows or Mac. Um, the next one is to make sure you've got the microbit hex file. Since this is something that you only have to do once, it's easy to forget about it since you did it maybe a couple years ago. And when you get a new micro bit, you still have to do this to get it to work with Scratch. Also, if you go and reprogram it with make code or any of the other amazing ways to program your micro bit, and you want to come back to Scratch, you'll have to reinstall this hex file. Uh, and so that's, that's just this little um, tiny file that you can download from our website right here, the micro bit landing page for Scratch. And then just drag it and drop it onto the micro bit. Uh, and then you'll be ready to get started. And you know that's working because it's, it'll scroll the the name of the micro bit on the screen while that's running. Uh, and so that's that's also a prerequisite for working with Scratch. So that might be the issue. Um, you can um, feel free to follow up using our um, contact us uh, link here at the bottom of the page. You can feel free to, to drop us a line that way, and we'll try to help you out. Uh, oh, also, I should mention there as well, that can help you um, check for various. Yeah, that's great. It seems that they said that they have not reinstalled the hex file after using like MakeCode and other uh, platforms. So that might be the issue. 
So hopefully they'll be able to reconnect. Oh, I think I dropped out there for a second. Sorry about that. Um, oh, cool. no worries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was just saying that they shared that they did not reinstall the hex file after switching to make code and other platforms. So that might very well be the reason. Yeah, so hopefully that will work. Great. Yes, that is likely the case. Um, I see another question about using a Chromebook. Do you need the Chrome OS app? And that is correct. Yes, to use um, the micro bit with Scratch on a Chromebook, um, you want to use the Chrome OS app for Scratch um, as opposed to using it on the web. Uh, and I saw a question earlier about the, the differences. So we have a family of downloadable apps. Those are all match the set of features available on the web-based version of Scratch, which is what I've been demoing. So it looks, looks the same. It's got all the same blocks. Costumes, sounds, all the same extensions. Um, it's just that it's not embedded in the Scratch online community where kids share projects and interact by commenting and, and remixing. And so uh, many people use that as an offline experience. But you can still download your project and then share it on the Scratch website later at some point if you'd like to. 